I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. So, are your moon photos just looking tiny, like little tiny moons, and you want to get something better and bigger? Well, we're going to talk about two different lenses and a telescope, and so you can see which one might be better for you. So, join us in today's episode of... <laughs> So in this video, we'll be talking specifically about using a DSLR camera and a lens or telescope, not a phone pressed to the eyepiece of a telescope. Oh, oh son, son of a, a First, we're gonna talk about this setup here. It's a very basic and beginner setup. It's a Canon T5i and a 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. This is a lens that comes with a lot of cameras. I typically like to shoot the moon at the full 300 millimeter focal length, and it's still not gonna be very large in the frame, but you can always crop, right? Next, we'll be trying out the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter G2 lens, zoomed all the way in at a full 600 millimeters. As you can see, it's on a Ioptron Skygutter Pro Star Tracker, and this is so I can freeze the moon, because when you start getting into high focal lengths, you'll quickly see the moon is running away from you, and we wanna freeze that. Like, let's say we wanna take multiple images. Um, that'll really help. It's always better to take a lot of images, just in case some are bad because of atmospheric turbulence or clouds or anything like that. You always wanna take a lot and choose the best ones. And finally, we're gonna use a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope with the Canon camera connected to the back. This is the Celestron C11, and as you can see, it's on a tracking mount, the EQ6R Pro. At this point, it's almost necessary to have a tracking mount. You might not have had to use one with the 600 millimeter lens, but with this, it's, it's very difficult. The moon is moving out of the frame really fast. You have to set your shutter speed super fast to catch it. And if there's atmospheric turbulence, that's going to cause problems too, because you're going to want to keep shooting it over and over. You might even want to take a video, which we're going to get to in a few minutes. All right, so that's the equipment we're going to use. Now let's go outside and find a place to shoot. Wait, Wait, did, did I, forget I forget something? something? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, my equipment. My equipment. That's okay though, you don't actually have to be in a cool location or a dark location to photograph a moon. You can be in a city, dark site, it does not matter. Uh, lunar photography is kind of like the exact opposite of most astrophotography, where most astrophotography, you're trying to get long exposures as long as possible. In lunar photography, you're trying to get as short of an exposure as possible. So, I think I'm just gonna go set up on the eastern side of the house. So let's give the first rig a shot, the T5i and the 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens on a basic tripod. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to 300 millimeters. Turn on the camera and point up at the moon. Okay, I've got my camera set to manual mode. I've dialed in my ISO to 100, the lowest number it'll go because the moon is very bright. It's like photographing a light bulb. I set my aperture to F9.0. That should help things get a lot more crisp and also it keeps the moon from getting too bright. Now let's turn on our live view and we can see the moon right there. Let's see if I can center it better. And let's manually zoom in a little bit on it. Okay, it's way too bright. So I'm gonna adjust my shutter speed There we go. That's starting to look like a moon, but it's a little out of focus. Let's use this zoom button a little more. And I'm gonna turn my focus ring until it's in focus. And there we go, that looks pretty darn focused. So let's zoom back out to normal. And there's our moon. Now I'm just gonna take this little remote here and take a few shots. I like to take several just in case one turns out better than the other. All right, now we're gonna take it up a notch. I've got the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens zoomed in at 600 millimeters with the T5i on the back. And this is the iOptron Skyguider Pro Star Tracker. It's gonna follow the moon so I don't have to constantly reframe. 
I've already got my Star Trekker polar aligned with the North Star Polaris. Some people have asked me before, do I need to polar align if, if I'm tracking the moon? And the answer is absolutely. One important thing to take note of is that your Star Trekker needs to be turned to the lunar setting for it to follow the moon at the proper speed. Now we're gonna keep the same camera settings that we did with the last lens. I've got an ISO 100, aperture F9, and we ended up going with a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second. I'm gonna switch over to live view. And there we see the moon, it is not in focus. So once again, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and turn my focus wheel. You need to make sure you're in manual focus when you're doing this. Even zoomed in like this, we can see the moon's not really moving out of the screen, and that's why a Star Tracker is so good. Now we're gonna zoom back out to normal, pick up the remote, and snap a few pictures. Now let's go with the big rig. I've got the Celestron C11 attached to the Canon T5i. This has a native focal length of 2,800 millimeters, but right here I have a focal reducer that brings it down to about 1,690. It's very important to make your polar alignment as accurate as possible for a telescope this big, otherwise your moon's gonna be running away just like you weren't using a star tracker at all. All right, let's look at the back of the camera. Now we can see it's a little dimmer, so let's change our shutter speed a little bit. There we go, I think that looks good. One problem I have is the moon barely fits in the frame, like corners are being cut off. But let's take a few shots of this. Got the old remote, let's take some photos. Okay, one thing I'm noticing that's quite strange is that on the back of my screen it looks good, but my actual shots are way too bright, way too blown out. That is odd, so I gotta work on that for a second. Okay, what I ended up doing is dropping the shutter speed down to one four thousandth of a second because the F ratio or aperture um, on this telescope is F6.3 and that lets in a ton more light than my lenses did. So I get e an even faster shutter speed. So let's take a few shots. I think it could be a touch brighter. Yeah, looking a lot better. I went with one twenty-five hundredth of a second. While we've got the C11 telescope out, I'm gonna go ahead and connect my camera and mount to my laptop, and we're gonna do a process called lucky imaging, where we take a video of the moon and use all the best photos and stack them into a, a clean image and throw away all the bad ones. This kind of makes up for the atmospheric turbulence and the, the way the moon kind of warbles and looks like it's underwater. It'll throw away the worst of those photos and keep the best. Now here we are in a piece of software called Backyard EOS. It's an astrophotography software for Canon cameras. You can also get Backyard Nikon if you have a Nikon camera. I basically came up here and connected my camera and then I went over here to Planetary. This is where you take your videos. I kept my ISO at 100 and I had to mess around with the shutter speed to get the brightness I wanted. Let's see if we can brighten it up even more. There we go. Okay, another thing I can do is use the EQ Mod Controller to control my mount to move the moon around. Trying to center it up a little better. There we go. So let's go ahead and go to image count and we're gonna set it to a thousand at first. And let's go ahead and hit record. All right, now that's finished. I'm just gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna do a shorter image count this time. I'm gonna try a 700 and hit record. Another interesting thing we can do in Backyard EOS is actually use the five times zoom feature and zoom in and take another video like that so we can really see into some of these craters. So let's give that a shot. I'm gonna double click so I can move our zoom point around. And let's see what this looks like. The five times zoom. You can see the warble right now and this is why we like to do lucky imaging. I'm gonna change my image count back up to a thousand and we're gonna record a video. And let's just try a few different areas on the moon and just do this and have fun with it. Well, some of you are probably wondering how on earth you take a video and make it into a photo. Well, you can do that using a free program called Auto Stackert. I'm not going to go into how to use Auto Stackert at the end of this video, but 
next week I will put out a moon processing tutorial where I will touch on how to use AutoStacker to make your videos of the moon into a single photo. So my takeaway personally from this is you don't need a really big telescope to take great photographs of the moon. As a matter of fact, the big telescope could be more hassle than it's worth. Still, in the end, it did give the nicest image by far. So that about wraps up this video. Before I show you my final moon photos, I just wanna say thanks so much for watching. It's always a pleasure making videos for you guys. You're so great. If you liked the video, leave me a like and subscribe. Like I said, I've got a moon processing video coming out next week. Orion's high in the sky. We're gonna be shooting lots of stuff in Orion this winter so there's just lots to look forward to can't wait to see you then and as always stay spacey clear skies and good night